In this chapter, we're talking about some advanced data handling techniques. Again, I'm not going to go through every part of the chapter, but I want to focus on sorting. You often need to have files sorted into either ascending or descending order because it simplifies searching for items, it simplifies merging files. There's a lot of reasons you'd like to put certain things in order or in sequence. Now, we're going to go through the, one of the more common algorithms for that, which is called a bubble sort. And what it does is it compares two numbers that are next to each other, and if they're not in the correct order, it swaps them, which sounds really simple, but it takes several steps to make it through and sort things. So I've set up pseudocode. We have three variables. We have current, next, and temp. I have two for loops. I have an outer for loop, which will execute five times, and I have an inner for loop, which will execute five times. So in all, we're going to loop through this 25 times because we're going to have to step. This will force us to go back to zero on the inner loop and keep stepping through it. I've set up an array that is six um, it's six spaces long. Both of our loops are set up to be one less than the number of spots in the array. Because what's going to happen is we're going to start by comparing one to two, two to three, actually zero to one, one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five. There's nothing to compare the last one to. So you always run through one less than the number of the array. So let's take a look at the logic. And we're going to go through and sort these numbers so they come up in order. So let's look at the code. Now we're just going to go through this five times. We're starting here the first time through. We're currently at c equals 0. And this is my first time stepping through the arrays. And for i equals 0, i less than 5, we're starting with 0. The current is array i, that's 0, that's 16. Next is 42. If current, 16, is greater than next, 42, you swap them. It's not. Now, if we wanted to change the order on this, we'd change the direction. If we wanted it to be in descending order from highest to lowest, I'm looking for ascending order, high, uh, lowest to highest. So 16 to 42, they're in the right relationship. So I come back here and add 1 to i on the inner loop. So i equals 1, so that makes current equal to 42, next equal to 3, and now 42 is greater than 3. So we execute what's in the for loop. So temp, which is going to hold the current value, becomes 42. Current becomes next, which was 3, and next becomes temp, which is 42. So the 3 and the 42 swap places. And 3 is now in element 1, and 42 is now in element 2. That's our first swap. We're next going to go through the loop again. This will become, we're on i for 2. So if i is 2, 0, 1, 2, so i equals or our current equals 42, next equals 73, is 42 greater than 73? No, they're in the right order. So we increment our loop. So now the loop becomes, i becomes 3. 3 is 73. So current equals 73, next equals 5. If 73 is greater than 5, which it is, temp equals current, 73, current equals next, 5, next equals temp, 73. And these two have just swapped places. It's getting better. We're still not in order. We're going to go through again. So we're now on 4. So 4 is now 73. 5 is 27, so 73 to 27, and that is correct. 73 is greater than 27, so we want to swap those. So temp becomes 73, current becomes 27, next becomes 73, and we have just 
swap them. And while it's in a better order, we have to go through this whole thing a couple more times. So now we're going to go through, and we're going to be through one loop of this. And I'm not going to compare it each one, draw them out over here. You've seen the loop once. So we're going to compare 16 to 3. And we're going to swap them. We're going to compare 16 and 42. They're fine. 42 and 5. We're going to swap them. 42 and 27. We're going to swap them. 42 and 73. Those are in the right order. This is called a bubble sort because it's like bubbles in boiling water rising up to the top. The lightest element will float up to the top. So now we're on number two. And we always assume worst case scenario that these are really out of order. That's why you go through it one less than the number of times in the array. That will ensure it's always in the right order. We might end up in the right order before that. So again, we compare 3 and 16. 3 and 16 are in the right order. We would compare 5 and 16. We need to move 5 and 16. Now they're in the right order. 16 and 27, they're in the right order. 27 and 42, they're in the right order. 42 and 73. So we're going to have to run through the sort a couple more times, but they're already sorted. It all depends, and you never know how messed up they are. But you always, to be sure, you go through one less time than the number of items there are in the array. And that will make everything that is lighter or smaller float to the top. And that's why it's called a bubble sort. And you'll be doing that in your homework. There will be another lecture in using visual logic to demonstrate actually how to do that in the code.